This is my bicycle camper. Kind of the idea of this thing is for a little money you can put something together. You can travel around the country. If you have a little time on your hands, some tools, this doesn't take that much uh, time and energy to put together and you have your self-assemblance at home. Keeps you warm in the winter time, it's insulated. I have a little kitchen here, stove, sink, a few drawers here, place to put your water, all your food things, it's all here. This is a regular camper, but you tow with your bicycle. I became a fan of micro camping probably back in 2002 where I decided to tour around the country. All I had at the time was my little pickup truck and a cab over. Decided to make this little stealth camper. Worked out pretty sweet. A few years later I went to Burning Man and uh, made this post-apocalyptic bicycle camper. And I outfitted it with everything. One burner butane stove. But it wasn't a true road vehicle. Three pounds altogether. Several years later, I was again playing with Coroplast. This time, arc in the panels, and I discovered that you could create a very lightweight, strong structure just attaching the panels together with um, zip ties. This is the homeless emergency shelter. I've had this sitting in my yard now for uh, a couple of years. Several people asked me, why don't you make a bicycle camper out of that thing? And I decided to see if I can put some wheels on it and tow it with a bike. I always wanted to make one with a uh, Airstream nose. So the whole idea behind this camper came with um, playing around with the front nose. Uh, I wanted to make something aerodynamic and I looked up on the internet ways to make a kind of a globe. Found out the pattern how to make one. I made it mostly with uh, old recycled campaign signs. They come in four by eight sheets and I was able to harvest some right after a political campaign season. So. I just wanted to see what could be uh, made with the material. Okay, we're starting to uh, scoot down the uh, panels now. Here I've used a row of recycled signs, smaller ones, for the underlayment. So it's going to be two layers of four millimeter coroplast and then another. Okay, I just got done screwing down the two layers of coroplast for the bed to create a hammock. No plywood in this thing. Um, let's see if it works. The frame I made with one by two wood, real simple. Kept it real light, real simple, Ooh. real real cheap wood. Not bad for freebie campaign signs. Things can hold up. I uh, took a twenty dollar bicycle that I found at a garage sale and used the both front and rear wheel to put under here. Nice. So I would say this platform is probably three pounds, maybe at that, whereas a sheet of plywood to do this would be about eight or nine or ten pounds. I've got two sheets of chloroplast under here that kind of creates a hammock bed. So that's the way I was able to keep the weight of this thing way down. Very simple. Uh, I only had to use a screwdriver, a drill to pre-drill some screws, and um, it was pretty easy fabrication. I put screws every three inches just to make sure it was secure, and uh, hold up. It's comfortable. I like playing with this material. It's fluted plastic. It's um, what you see a lot of campaign signs made out of. 
So at the end of uh, campaign season, I went and harvested about five of these. And that's pretty much what this is made of. Crash. <laughs> so the flute of plastic is a fun material because it is just so light and so fun to play with. You just need a knife, tape measure, pencil to do your cutting and fabricating. Of course, the zip ties are way over here. <laughs> I was using zip ties to put it all together. I use these to uh, join them all together and then I just put duct tape over the uh, zip tie holes so it keeps the moisture out. And then I bought some paint meant for plastic and painted the whole exterior. This is just a little camouflage paint scheme I had going. You could paint anything you want though if you want or just keep it the natural color it is. So everything you see here is pretty much just, is just using uh, fluted plastic about four sheets worth. I used it for the whole shell, the floor, there's no real wood frame except for what's under me. And under there I used some one by two. Uh, I just arced these lengthwise and uh, this is actually just one sheet from this point forward, just cleverly cut and assembled. And then the other half is just the other sheet. Made the floor too with Coroplast. So basically this turned out to be a real lightweight structure. It's about 60 pounds. And again, I made these with old recycled campaign signs. So this is basically almost free. Uh, some bubble insulation to keep myself warm in the winter. So total cost, when you add up these little zip ties and the little bit of wood that I used for the frame and the $20 bike is about $150 to make the whole thing. So I wanted to outfit this with a kitchen and a place to put all my belongings. In the kitchen area, I just decided to put this little guy in inside the wheel well. Very simple little camping stove. Sinks right in there. I created these simple little shelves just using Coroplast and zip ties. And with just a few zip ties, you're able to fashion pretty much anything you want. Very durable and very lightweight. And again, I made these uh, wheel covers more for shelving space for cooking surface. Put the plates and cut your vegetables and whatnot on. Up here I've got a little spice shelf, another little shelf on this side here. Here I've just used a bread pan for my little water catchment. Down here is my trash. I decided to go with a glass gallon jug just because I don't like to store water in plastic. Here you got your spices, little shelf too I've made out of the chloroplast for your utensils and whatnot. Food up above. So I try to keep it to where you put all your heavy stuff down low for low center of gravity in case it got windy outside. But I've got a little bookshelf here. You know, I've got my favorite books, drawing implements, a few drawers here. It's kind of like what you'd normally have in a, any home but just in a real small scale. Tubs for holding my clothing. This way I'm able to move them to the front wheel wells to center all the weight while I'm traveling. Basically you're gonna be carrying the essentials, but it's nice to have these essentials readily at hand and that's kind of the whole idea of this, the drawers and whatnot. You don't have to go searching through bags, it's all here. Drawing implements. There's a stereo here too that I have with my MP3 player. Speakers facing this way. Little vent holes down here to bring in some fresh air. I have two little windows that pop up here on the sides. So you can see what's going on. Also, I have a skylight. This was made out of a one gallon uh, plastic tub. I cut the top out and put some clear plastic on there for the skylight so I can remove it for ventilation. This is the skylight. Um, it was simply made from a one gallon plastic bucket. I uh, cut a hole out of the lid, riveted on some plastic. So acts both as a skylight and just a nice little air vent. A few windows are here on the side. You close it up at night. And when you kick back here, it is very comfortable. It's very comfortable to just sit back, look out the door. It 
So basically, this is a home away from home. It's glam camping. And it's <laughs> you've got everything that you've got from your home. Where I'm at, it rains a lot, so it's not always easy to go outside and cook breakfast. Kind of home away from home. I mean, this is a pretty much a kitchen. Mmm, nothing like a fresh cooked breakfast. I'm just trying out my new kitchen galley. It worked pretty good. Nothing burned down. I didn't catch fire. Didn't get too hot in here. If I were to really take this on the road, I'd probably put a solar panel on the top so you can have some electricity for your lights and your radios and such. Computer, laptop. I would probably have a solar shower bag too and a few other this and that's just to get exactly what I'd want. It does show the possibilities of a new way to get around and travel or to live. You don't have car insurance, you don't have home insurance, payments, what do you got? Food. The movement now with the tiny homes on trailers, this is kind of it. For people who can't afford to pick up truck and build a little home they could put on a trailer. Maybe they could just do this and tour around. For people who are adventurers and don't mind pulling a little weight and taking their time traveling, this is how you think would be a fun way to go.